Hi everyone, um, today's video is going to be on paint consistency and paint mixing. Um, one of the biggest questions I get asked since I started this process, um, every time I put a painting up is, what consistency you paint, how do you mix your paint, where, what medium do you use, what acrylic paints do you use, what process do you use. So I thought before I did, um, originally I was going to do uh, a video today on hearts, uh, but the day has crept away and I thought, well, I can do that tomorrow, but I want to just save a bit of time tomorrow. So I thought if I show you how I mix the paints, how I do the consistency, and maybe do a little painting at the end, that'll help with tomorrow. And I think that's the biggest question that everybody gets to me. Um, I think when I first started this painting process, I did the same as everybody else did. I watched a lot of videos, I watched a lot of people doing what they did and how they did it. And I came to the process that if I use the mix I have now, that mix will do my style. Um, I can't stand here and tell you that it'll do the same for a swipe, it'll do the same for a chain pull. I can't say that. Um, and I'm not going to say, you know, that's the way it is for, for that. Um, what I'm saying is if you want to do my style of painting or if you want to do how I do the paints, this is how I do it, which will help you to do that. If you want to do another style of painting, I think you need to find somebody else who does that style of painting and see what they do for their mix because I think they all vary. Um, and I think one of the things that irritated me first when I first started was on YouTube or any other channels that you look at, it's always about the painting, how to do the painting, and they concentrate on the painting. Um, I don't think people need to concentrate on the painting. I think they need to concentrate on the mix and how to do it, and then create their own style and their own way that they want to paint and the things that they're happy with. So I think that's where I think it needs to be. And that's what I'm gonna to do today I'm going to explain to you how I get where I get to, to what I use, how I use it, and then show you the consistency. And I think, you know, if that'll be all right for today. Um, I think with the mix that I use, what I use is two parts Floetrol, one part distilled water, and one part acrylic paint. I think with the Floetrol, what I get the grip is there's different styles and different processes across the world. This one here is Otrol. That's what I use. That's the UK. I think obviously in Australia and the US there's different ones. I'm, I'm presuming they're fairly similar. Um, I find this can be uh, a little bit hit or miss. One minute it's thick, one minute it's thin, one minute it's gloopy, the next it's not. So. Whatever mix you use, I think you still have to be careful at the end of it what the actual consistency of this is and the consistency of the paint. Um, so what I do is I have little mixing cups here which give you in millimetres um, and I go 100, 200, 300, 400. So what I'd normally do is with a floor troll I always strain it to start so I have a little strainer, which I put on there, and then I mix out, you see how it's quite thick. Two hundred, look at that. So that's the floor chop. Acrylic paints that I use for my white and for my black, everybody asks me which I use. I use the same ones every time. For the acrylic, for the white and the black, I use um, the Essentials range, which I get on Amazon, which is from Langer Nickel. So that's the ones I use. Um, if I don't have that and I can't use that, the only other one that I use is Galleria. And what I find with Galleria, is that that is slightly thicker than this. So that's what I mean. So when you do your mix, when you're adding your water, it all depends on the thickness of the flow troll and the thickness of the paint. So what I'll do today is I'll use the essential. Don't tell Carol, but I've got one of her kitchen spoons. What I also find when I'm doing this, 
is when you do it, if you leave it to settle a little bit, because it's going to fall into that flow troll and it's going to push the line up. So I always just leave it a little second to come. And that's now on 300. So that's the 200 of flow troll, 100 of the paint, and then I use the distilled water. So with the distilled water, it doesn't matter which distilled water you use. Um, I get mine off Amazon. I seem to get everything off Amazon, but I appreciate it'll be different whichever part of the country or the world you're in. Um, why I use distilled water, people ask me. I use it because the mineral, the mineral content on a tap water can be quite high, and that will affect how your paint and your medium mixes together and how it flows. So I do that. You have to excuse me, I'll come at a different angle. So, that's up to the 400. Now I think if you use that basis for a starter mix, for anything that you use, once you decide uh, the thickness that you need your paint to be, you're either up or down on that side of things. So I use a little stick, which I mix it with. And I don't think I'm going to sit here and mix all this completely for you today because I've done one previously. But I wanted you to get a feel for where we're at and what we do. So mix that. It's going to mix, it's going to take all day. So what I do, I also have a little whisk, which you get from any kitchen store, any online store, and I use that to mix it up. And I think when you do this, the more you do it, you'll get a feel for the paint and for the flow troll and for the mix as you're mixing it yourself. And while you're doing it, you'll think, yeah, that's gonna be a little bit too thick or that's gonna be a little bit too thin or you'll get a feel for where you're at. Lately, now, whether it's the paint, whether it's the weather, whether it's the water, I'm not quite sure. It's been coming out slightly thicker than what I need. And I think when people talk to me about my paintings and they say it's a Dutch pour, it's this, it's that. Um, and this isn't me just being me. I don't actually think it is a Dutch pour because the actual mix for a Dutch pour is thinner than the mix that I will use. And the reason for that is when I put my paints onto the top layer, what I'm looking for is the paint to hold it rather than push it. Because when you actually push it with your straw, you don't want the actual paint mix itself to go too far. You need to be able to control it. You need to be able to push it and you'll be able to push it to wherever you need it to be. So I think it's slightly thicker than you would if you were using um, a Dutch pour. So you see that there. That is still quite thick. This is the one that I've done the other day, and you can see that it's quite thinner. And that's what I'm looking for that mix. Probably, if I was to be honest with you, it's probably a little bit thinner than it was normal, but I'm happy with that. I think that'll be okay. What I do with this, once I've done it, I would normally, when I'm ready for it and I've mixed it and I'm happy with the mix, say I'm happy with the mix, what I would normally do is I'd get another container and I would strain it again. And the reason I strain it again is to make sure that you've mixed your paint properly, make sure that there's no last bit of glue left in the actual flow troll, um, and then at that point it's fine. I then normally, would leave that to settle overnight, wrap cling film the top of it, leave it to settle, um, and then it will get its consistency just as you need it. So when you come back in the morning, it may have thickened, it may have thinned, it may be you know not right. So I always just check it and look at it and make my decision just before I paint. One tip I will give to beginners is when I first started, like everybody, um, 
you tend to use a lot of canvases, waste a lot of canvases, a lot of paint, uh, and it's expensive. You know, it, it's, you know, when you're at that stage of experimenting and playing around with things, it can get quite expensive. So I got these, which are plywood boards, and they're actually like a canvas. I've had customers buy these, they like them. Um, it's an eight by eight, it comes as plywood. Um, I then prime it, give it two or three coats of prime, um, let it settle, I normally sand it down then, um, which gives you the surface that you want. And then you can use that time and time again, so you could use it, I could use it today, um, I might get something think, oh that's rubbish, I'm not happy with that. But just take it to the sink, just wash it off, let it dry, and it's ready to go again. Um, the second tip I'll give you, <laughs> this is a real big mistake here, and Carol will vouch for this one. Um, when I sorted the back of my canvases out so that I didn't want them to be dirty, I used tape, which I put round the actual canvas, and then I put pins like everybody would do to sit it above so that if the paint drips off, it's gone. Once I'd done these, and the painting is done, and I had varnished it, and it was all lovely, and the customer said, yeah, I want that painting, it's fantastic, and thought, right, okay. And I would pull this off, I left it too late, for one thing, um, and it was really sticky. Um, and we had occasions where we had sent the painting to a customer, um, and the wrapping had stuck to it, the uh, bubble wrap had stuck to it, and it was a complete drama, and I thought, okay, so I can't be using that again. So I then looked at this, and I'm just in the process of trying this. It's like a paper, and uh, I think you know that's going to be okay because I think once you pull this off, and when I've tried it, um, it doesn't leave a sticky film on the on the actual back of it. So beware of that. And I know people do different things on the back of their paintings, and they, they they finish them in different ways, but that's just the way I finish it. That's the way I did it. Um, and then, like I said, make sure you strain this at the back. And that is it. Um, the blowtorch I use is this one here. I like it because um, it's got an on and off here, which has got a protection guard on it. You can control the flow of the gas when you actually click it. Um, and it works really well for me. I think a lot of people struggle on what they use, how they use it. They all use different ones. I've used a couple. Um, this one, it works just perfect for me. And I've always had, you know, no problem with it at all. I think if you look at the bottom, that's what it is called Masterclass. So that's that one. When it comes to paints, um, I've told you about my uh, base colour. What I use for my main colours and for my uh, patterns that I use, I use um, Arteza. And the ones I get are these, um, not just this colours, but they come in this brand um, and they come in a box of 60, I think it is. I had a box somewhere, ah, uh, here it is, which is this one, oh, box of 36 in this one. You do get them in 36, so you get them in 60. This one was a metallic ones where they give you metallic paints. And the other ones give you different colours. So it's just finding which ones you want, which ones you're happy with. Um, and they are what I use. And I've never had any problems with them. Um, the colour consistency has always been great. Um, I think when I mix these, I mix them in a smaller jug. So I have this jug here. So I would start with a 50 of the paint. I would then put 100 of the flow troll and then 50 of the distilled water which would give you the same mix and a little bit more water in the top to get it to that consistency so that's what I use for them they then fit quite nicely into these excuse the mess of it um, so that jug with the 200 mils where they've mixed completely will fit into that squeezy bottle and I really love these squeezy bottles um, I think it gives you so much control when I did the heart, which is in the corner there, I, it was really nice because it was like doing ice and I just let it flow. It gave me a nice line instead of, you know, dropping it out of cups and dropping it out of well. That really works nicely for my style of painting. And I think when you use, saw the other painting, uh, it works nicely because you can control the flow, whether you want it in lines or whether you want it in dots. So that's that. 
the pins I use, I use wooden pins, which are here, be careful when they stick on the top, um, and they work well. If you use the plastic ones, I find when I hammer them sometimes, or when I knock them into the canvas, they break. So I always use the wooden ones. And be careful on the wooden ones you use. I had no drama with these, but when it comes to the end sometimes, and you want to take the pins out, some of the wooden ones will actually pull away from the metal. These haven't, and they've worked really well with me so far. Um, and I get them on Amazon as well. So they work really well. Um, the other thing that I have, I have my level, little baby level, which I always make sure the painting is level before I pour on it. Um, or else it's gonna flow, which we've had that happen to us before, and it's gone over the edge. Um, and the other thing I have is a Stanley knife. And I use that for everything. It helps me to pull the pins out. It helps me to trim the tape. Um, never be without that one. It's fantastic. Uh, and of course, people that know my art know that I don't use a hairdryer or a blower. I use a straw. I've got these on Amazon. Thought the world had given up on plastic straws, but I managed to find these. Um, and that's what I use. And they work really well for me. So that's that. And obviously, a tape measure and plastic sticks and that's everything I use and that's how I mix it so just to run through that consistency again it's I'm um, 100 <laughs> right to the end it's 200 100 100 so 200 flow troll, 100 paint, 100 distilled water. And like I say, there's a little bit more on that now, depending on that paint or depending on the consistency of your flow troll. So that's the consistency you're looking for. And everybody does this. And I watch so many videos and they think, yeah, that's easy. I can see that. It's so difficult to get that feel. And I think the only way you're going to get it is to practice and practice and practice. And by using the plywood board, that's going to save you a little bit of money. Um, I think that's it, really. So that's how I mix my paint. That's the consistency. Um, the only other things that I use differently, I use the magenta, which you use a lot, which is the essential range again. And, and I was telling everybody for years I was working with teal, um, and it was teal this and teal that. And then I actually went to order it, and I thought, oh, it's not teal. It's actually turquoise. So when you look at my paintings and I've been telling you the teal, it's actually turquoise. Uh, and I love that colour. And a lot of the paintings that you've seen that I do, that's the colour I use and they come out really well. So that's that. Now, that's the end of that bit. Um, and I've got all the way through this and I thought to myself, well, I'm going to do a little painting just to show you that it works. Um, and I thought to myself, I've gone through all this. And we've actually done it and I cock the painting up it's not going to look good so we're going to try it anyway the other thing that I'd say to you that I use I use these dust wraps which probably are not the best thing to use they work for me and I get all our orders in the UK come with bubble wrap and I have loads of bubble wrap and I thought one day how could I use the bubble wrap how's it going to work for me so I use bubble wrap just as a base. So when the paint spills over, I can just pick a bubble wrap up. I can put it in the bin. The other thing which is quite nice, if you have a small painting you put on it, you can actually lift the bubble wrap with the painting and you can actually move it rather than picking it up and distilling it around, whatever. So that is how I do that. So I've got a small canvas it's a 20 inch by 8 inch and um, as you can see I've wrapped it at the bottom a lot of people struggle with what to do with the actual wooden uh, pins that come with these um, I do them so that they sit level to the actual board so if you look in there you'll see I've seen other people put them so they spin out or they're sticking out in the middle that's the way I do them it works for me. I think that is the correct way to do it. I'm sure somebody will tell me if I'm wrong, um, but that's it. So that is my canvas all set, ready to go. What we're gonna do, 
I'm going to do something I haven't done for a long time. So if it doesn't work, I'm going to look an idiot, but I'm sure we'll be okay. So that was the paint from yesterday. That's the mix. And I'm going to put it onto the canvas. And you can see that is slightly thicker than you would if you were doing a Dutch pour. And there'll be people out there that do Dutch pours and they'll probably say, no, you're wrong, you've got it wrong, that's it. I think what I'm trying to say to you today, this is how I do it, how it works for me. Um, I'm not saying it's gonna work for everybody. It's just the process that I use. So when you pour it, quite nicely now sometimes I've done it and it hasn't it's been a little thicker than that and it will work for this process um, I don't think the thickness is the issue I think what is the issue is if it's too thin and just go around the edges make sure you cover it all And then, let you all know, as you see, you can control the flow of the gas. I'm doing this in a bit of a rush, so I do apologise. I'm conscious that I'm probably boring the hell out of everybody. Um, so what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to do three round shapes. A lot of the painters I've been doing at the moment are lines. Um, but originally when I first started, it was all rounds. And I, I know when you do a Dutch pour, you do your rounds and then you would push the paint over the top of the actual colours. And that's one of the reasons I don't use a hair dryer. So when I do it, I flick the paint onto it so that it doesn't push the paint or disturb the paint. It sits on it quite nicely. A lot of people are gonna tell me that's the wrong way to do it and it should be done, you know, as it is. It works for me. Like I say, it's how my paintings work. Um, you'll get your own way of doing things. You'll work your own way and style out as you move forward. And I'm sure you'll do things completely different. And I think that's what it's all about. It's not about copying what other people do, um, as you can see. We've got a dog here and the dog here is there. Um, yeah, it's not about copying people. It's about finding a style that you like and moving that style into a process that you're happy with. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use these paints that I've got here. So I'm going to use magenta, which is the essentials. I'm going to use uh, plum purple which is our teaser this plum purple I just love to use it with this is called shocking lime green um, which is um, from our teaser as well and they go well together so I'm going to use them I'm not sure about using the blue but I think I will use a bit of blue and then at the end of it what I might do is uh, put a little bit of black and push the black which will try and give a bit of definition so, with this one, I'm going to do three. So, find the middle. If you 
don't get the middle exactly, don't worry about it because you're actually going to push your paint out. So you can push it more in the actual way that you need to push it, if that makes sense, when you come to it. And then with white, push it around. And then what I do instead of the old hairdryer is I just flick. It doesn't harshly move it. And then instead of using the hairdryer, and when I bend down, please excuse my bald head. You know, I noticed that in my last video, I was shocked. I thought, oh my God, I'm bald on top. <laughs> So that's the start. What I find, if you blow that too much and it hits the edge, it's gonna go over the edge and it's gonna drag the paint and it's gonna pull it away. So try when you're doing this to keep them in the, in the actual canvas without going over the edge too much. And then, a straw. Somebody asked me the other day about the straw. Um, if you use it too much, will it drip saliva down the straw? It does, so be careful. Um, make sure that I use two or three straws and make sure that I don't have a build up so that it doesn't give you that effect. And like I say, it doesn't matter about the middle because like I'm doing now, if you've got further to push this one, pull that into the side, just to give you a feel of where we're at. And then what we do is to pick a little section in each one where I want to give it a bit of definition. A 
it just gives it a little bit of a feel. And that I'd play around with this one a bit more if I had time, but I think you get the feel of it. Um, it's getting this this one's really nice. I like this one. It's got a nice feel. That one's nice. That three are okay. That's the one that I'm annoyed. But I could strip that out and I could replace it in and pull it out. But that just gives you a little idea. Um, so that is that. Um, I'm sorry I didn't do the heart this evening, but like I say, I'll do that tomorrow. Um, and one thing I would like to say is thank you everybody who has subscribed to my channel. Um, I was overwhelmed by the fact I only did one video and I've had uh, 700 subscribers. It's fantastic. I really appreciate it. Um, once that, Now that we've got this done, I will do some more paintings. Like I say, tomorrow I'll do the heart. Um, you've all been fantastic to me and you know you give me a lot of support. If there's anything I can help with, honestly, I don't mind questions. Um, like you know I'll sit and answer all day um, I appreciate everybody and I appreciate your effort of supporting me and following me so thank you very much indeed thank you.